with the storage of various small things, which inevitably suddenly become necessary on the road, Citroen is doing poorly. Of course, there is a glove compartment, but it does not solve the problem, and it is inconvenient for the driver to constantly climb into it, especially when driving. The same cup holder, with a small diameter, maximum for a can of cola, is located extremely poorly, in the center next to the gearshift handle, and the central panel hangs over it. If you try to squeeze something larger into this space, you immediately get inconvenience when engaging third gear. There is no backlight in the visors, which is not encouraging, especially when a dissatisfied wife is riding in the passenger seat, who needs to powder her nose. The trunk is excessively huge, although as you please, but even here there are some incidents, including huge trunk lid hinges. They just eat up a lot of space. The operation of the limiting springs when opening the trunk also leaves dissatisfaction. Due to its impressive size, when opened in an intermediate position, you can get hit on the neck or head, since the lid is not fixed in this opening range. A child should not be trusted to bring something from the luggage compartment, he can simply absorb it. I just want to scream, children, don't get into the trunk. I myself. The rear seats are spacious, you can squeeze in a child's seat without much difficulty, and there is plenty of room for adults too. But again we encounter a drawback for storing small items. No pockets or lampshades. You don't have to mention the family nature of this car as a class, it's not just a non-family used car, but some kind of budget taxi, got in, drove, got out and forgot. What was the decision to place the rear window buttons for the top version somewhere below in the center console? Probably inspired by the decision to indicate the change of frequencies on the radio with a big Ferris wheel in the center, the engineer decided to place these buttons closer to the driver, thereby saving on installing the power window control unit on the driver's door. But rear passengers also have an advantage over the front ones, handles are installed on the side above the head. If the front passenger, dislocating his arm, holds onto the side door handle while moving, then the gallery is happy in this regard. It doesn't matter that instead of two headrests there are two growths of some kind, not in cramped conditions, but in offense. And with all this abundance of inconvenience, the noise insulation, which is practically absent, loudly reminds us of itself. Bravo, Alicia. In principle, for such a huge space, the stove and air conditioner do not pose problems in operation, but there are unpleasant operating features. The power is a little lacking and, when getting into a cold car, you immediately want to turn on the heated seats, if any, but that's not the case. The heating does not turn on immediately, but after a while after starting the engine. The central suggestive flywheel is constantly instinctively mistaken for a volume control, although its function is intended to change the frequency. It is not clear what the engineer was guided by when he came up with such a solution, it could be old tube radios or serious drugs, but it is definitely impossible to get used to it. The 115 horsepower version has the same dynamics as a massive sedan, and maintainability is normal. A cast iron block speaks of a resource of 500,000 kilometers without major repairs, of course, without overheating the engine. But 72 horsepower. The 1.2 liter engine is frankly not enough, you have to turn the engine at higher speeds, which affects the resource. It's worth thinking about this when choosing this engine for fuel economy reasons. The ride is not reliable. Frequent breakdowns are support bearings, which will have to be replaced somewhere around 15 to 20,000 kilometers, and wheel bearings, replacement after 20 to 25,000 kilometers. In addition, the low ground clearance, adapted for Russia, will cause problems when driving off asphalt. Constant complaints from owners about knocking in the suspension are explained by mechanics as a problem with the car or its peculiarity. As you know, the brand has two chevrons as its symbol, such a dualistic approach. The top one represents modern and avant-garde solutions in the automotive industry, while the bottom one represents cheapness and accessibility to the masses. To summarize, the Citroën C-Elysee can be placed somewhere in the middle between the chevrons, that is, in the void.